This year is about pursuing something great. This year is about the dream that I've had for as long as I can remember. This year is not about showing up. It's about making a statement. Trust me when I say this. The time is now. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Another episode of The Time Is Now is here. We're on the treadmill today. So we're at that point in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the season, in the YouTube season, uh, that we're setting the scene. We're still setting the scene. It's still early doors. It's still the first few weeks. We're still getting our feet wet. And I want to set the scene for everyone to kind of come along with, the, with me or potentially just use this as a later date. Um, so I want to tell you how to like start your food. Like what do you do if you're just coming off a, the best off season of your life? What is the best thing for you to do with your food? We're going to talk about protein. We'll talk about carbohydrates. We'll talk about fats. We're also going to talk about things like uh, sodium and potassium and electrolytes, things that potentially you guys haven't thought about that can actually help when it comes to prep. Because ultimately, when it comes to prep, what we're trying to do here is perform at the highest level possible. And actually, when you're trying to perform at the highest level possible, it's those little things, those marginal gains that count in the long term. So. You know, another five more minutes on here, and uh, we'll get one back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, always, man. Oh, that's okay. Is that 10 as well? Yeah. I could have gone heavier. I wish I went heavier as well. <laughs> Good. <clears throat> well then. Good. Oh, and guys, we'll take off first. Uh, potentially most important nutrient uh, is going to be protein. So, first of all, you probably have a higher demand and a a bigger reason to have higher protein in a prep. That's just generally because when you're in a bulk, when you're in a surplus of calories, you have a surplus of nutrients, a surplus of food. So actually, you can you can just grow off that because you're not like you know you're not in a calorie uh, deficit where you're trying to or your body's trying to spare certain nutrients for you know to keep optimal function. So let's say uh, you, you're at the usual, let's say anything between two two to three grams of protein per kilogram. Uh, I'm like 120 kilos. I eat about 275 grams of protein, so that's right around about two-ish. There, there, about maybe just above. Um, that's pretty much off preference, but we know that kind of two to three gram range is gonna be where you're gonna have enough protein to muscle repair, improve, but it's not gonna be so much that it's gonna cause digestion issues or anything like that. So, um, realistically speaking, in an off-season, I could probably come down to about 250, because that's quite on the low end. Uh, and actually, I'd go to 300 during a prep, and would hit that 300 grams of protein during a prep. Uh, it doesn't need to be as extreme as 300 grams of protein for you guys. Maybe you're having kind of 200 in the off season. Uh, you could just go to 225 or 250 during a, when you prep, and that is generally just because uh, you need that protein. You know, you're going to be a lot more muscle protein breakdown. You're going to be in a deficit. Your body's going to be wanting much more high quality nutrients. So, protein is the one that's probably going to change the least. Uh, if it's any difference from our season, it's going to be slightly higher and you're just going to stay there the entire time. No need to bring that down or up, apart from if you carb load, which we'll talk about when we get there, which is a good few weeks away. So. Is that five? Four. Four. Good. That's right. Good, yeah, yeah. Strong. Easy. Drive those elbows through. Good. 
Yeah, yeah, come on. Good. <sighs> Drive. Come on. Come on. Oh, sick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck. I think you could put the seat higher up, you know? You're out right out here. It's so awkward. I think you need to be like. Yeah. That's how it feels. So then, guys, uh, the next and probably like what I would call the main driver of a deficit is going to be carbohydrates. Now, hopefully, you put yourself in a very, 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 very good position in the off season whereby your protein's been, you know, around that mark that we just recently, that we previously talked about. But also, your carbohydrates are sky high. You know, if you can be up towards six, seven, eight hundred carbs of uh, grams of carbohydrates in your off season per day. You're in a very, very, very good position to pull those down, still have loads of carbohydrates to eat, uh, but still create that deficit that you want. And that's really, really important because carbohydrates are not something that you want to put to zero. They're not something that you want to do that with. Carbohydrates is energy. Carbohydrates equals performance. Carbohydrates equals what keeps muscle because performance keeps muscle. So if you can make that connection in your brain, you wouldn't want to uh, drive that down as quickly as possible. Um, and you want to preserve that as much as possible. But, you know, you should be in the biggest surplus of those carbohydrates. So you're going to have to take away from them. Uh, you can pr take away a really, really big one to start off with. Talk about like a thousand calories, you know. Maybe take off 250 grams of carbohydrates from the start. And you should still be, hopefully, above 500. So right now I'm at 500 and have been for the last two or three weeks. But whereby I've uh, put my carbohydrates and my calories up so high in the off-season, just coming to 500 carb and I'm getting leaner and I can feel the difference. So uh, it kind of highlights the importance of getting them high in the off season, but also that'll probably be your first port of call for taking down food uh, will be carbohydrates. So probably take a big chunk off straight away. Good. Moving through, good. Yeah, and again, come on, let's go. Come on. Finish that. Good. Fuck. It doesn't drop off enough quicker. The quick seat's enough. not, uh, that was like half reps. <laughs> seat needs to go back one more for me. I was like, I was touching the bottom before I was coming up. Okay. Good, that's easy. Yeah. <clears throat> come on then. Yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah, that's you, that's you. That's one. Come on then, let's go. I'm here, I'm here, come on, come on. Finish that, come on Josh, lock up. Good, that's right shoulder. <clears throat> oh. Oh. oh God. You just go, it's so heavy man. I know, it gets heavy. It needs to it. start a bit higher up, so it doesn't drop off. Good. Spend a bit of time in that short. There we go. Try and snap those elbows off. Good. Good. Nice. That's good. That's lovely. Yeah, yeah. And again. Smooth. Come on in. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Dropping off. Good. Not yeah, it's fucking not, the right shot. Not right. dropping off. <laughs> Killing me. Uh, so we're gonna talk about fat. So fat is. Fat is obviously our highest uh, density of like calories per gram, nine calories per gram. Uh, honestly, fat doesn't really change too much either. Uh, I would much rather start your fat nice tonight. Hopefully, in the off season, much like carbohydrates, you manage to get your fats up. You manage to get up to 80, 90, maybe 100 grams a day. So you can really kind of chop away at those until like a minimum sort of dose. Fat is very essential for hormone regulation. Fat is essential for a lot of things. Um, so naturally cutting fat to like zero, nope. it's not a good idea. So we tend to work off like 0.4 grams per kilogram. So for me, 50, 60 grams is like a normal amount. 
obviously I'm going to go lower than that. I use hormones anyway, so uh, my risk to reward ratio is also higher. So I'm more than happy to bring that quite low. I probably won't go below like 30. 30 is pretty fucking low. I probably wouldn't go below that, but something around 40-ish will probably be where I end up. And for a lot of people, that's kind of where you will end up because anything lower, the, the, the negative starts to outweigh the positives of that calorie deficit. So fats aren't moving too much. They, never, they probably won't move too much either other than down to that minimum and then I'll stay there and we'll uh, talk about a few other things in a second. I thought of a joke there on like rep four, and I was like, <laughs> just carry on. <clears throat> oh. We can uh, also talk about things that I think will make a big difference. Things like hydration. I think people don't think about that type of thing. They just think, oh, drink water. Well, actually, pop hydration is actually sodium intake, potassium intake, things like taurine. They can all kind of upregulate the hydration to a cell. And when you're sweating more, when you're training harder, when you're in the summer right now, uh, also when you're using things like clambutrol, you're combining things that make you sweat more, things that make you, essentially, as soon as you start sweating, you know, sweat salty, it's because you're losing salt, you're losing potassium, losing electrolytes from that sweat. So actually just replacing it with water is not often good enough. And when you're in the position where you want every muscular attraction to be perfect, you want everything to be as efficient as it can be, actually hydrating is one of the most important things you can do. So when I wake up, I have a scoop of electrolytes, I have some electrolytes within my intra workout drink as well. So I'm constantly replacing what I'm potentially losing. And I think that that's one of those things that a lot of people overlook. So, you know, rounding that up, protein, never gonna change. It's really, really important to have protein. Uh, I do not need to explain why. Carbohydrates, they're gonna be the highest of the three macros, but they're also gonna be the ones that you drive down, probably the one that you make the most changes with. Fats, they're gonna be the ones that probably stay fairly stable, but they will come down. Something like a, from 70 grams to 40 grams will probably be what you'd see in a, in a deficit. Um, then of course, you've got things like electrolytes, and then there's also things like micronutrients, meal timing, which we can finish up on after I try and actually get a pump. So then we could talk about meal timing now. For me, meal timing is something that becomes increasingly more important as you get leaner, as you look to take off body fat. Because meal timing is what can help with energy levels throughout the day. Whereas when you're in a surplus, food is always in abundance. You always have a store of carbohydrates to go to. So actually, when it comes to going into a deficit, when you have those carbohydrates, it becomes increasingly more important. So you wanna make sure that you're properly fueled before your workouts. Make sure you're getting enough carbohydrates in before your workout. Not only that, but make sure you're replenishing them post-workout and optimizing that little eating window there of upregulation of GLT4 enzyme, or GLUT4, however you wanna call it, glucose transporter 4 enzyme to increase the amount of carbohydrate that you can get post-workout. Um, and then just make sure you've got a nice even spread throughout the day, regular protein feedings, and ultimately eating optimally to fuel your body rather than just eating to grow. I think there's two different things now.
first that is the session done. I'm gonna have to go do a, a look a bit more walking. Cause that's what we do. I tend to get all my steps done before like the time I get home after the gym and it's like quarter past 12 so I can just sit down and work until about 6 or 7 p.m. this evening so we're gonna leave it there guys hope you kind of took some value from that hope you guys just took some things that you maybe didn't know some things just to think about and uh, hopefully you can like scope out where your your diet would start when you get into it so don't forget to like comment subscribe guys I'll see you very soon it's gonna start getting nasty soon I promise give me like two or three weeks and I'll be way nicer to look at so hold tight see ya